you're enjoying Racing World, it's brought to you by Perspective Group. It's your global motorsport podcast show brought to you in conjunction with Race Control Magazine. One race remains now in the 2024 NTT IndyCar Series. But before we get to that, we've got to go back a couple of races, and that was the return to the Milwaukee Mile. So here we go. Well, as I said, there's just one race remaining in the 2024 NTT IndyCar Championship. But before that, there was the two races on the return to the famed Milwaukee Mile. Boy, oh boy, what a facility. Great to see it back in the championship. But before that, there was the final road course event at Portland, which was a couple of weeks ago now. But one of the things it did do is it effectively took Scott Dixon out of this championship year with uh, zero points on the table for him out of that round, failing to even complete that first lap with the accident with Petro Fittipaldi and uh, maybe kicked off by Kyle Kirkwood. Well, yeah, it was kicked off by Kyle Kirkwood. At least that's my view on the whole deal. Um, it, it's meant that Dixon isn't a championship contender anymore, but more importantly, what it's done is it's moved him way down the championship order as well. And for someone who was sitting effectively second and third in the championship, he's now around that fifth, sixth mark. And that's not where we expect Dixie to be at this time of the year. But anyway, before the Milwaukee weekend kicked off, had the chance to talk to Dixon on the Friday press conference before the event got underway and just reflect on what really happened at Portland. Uh, yeah, we spoke today. Um, yeah, I don't know. It was definitely a F you move. And I explained that to him. You know, it's kind of amateur hour when you're doing stuff like that. Um, but it's also how the series allows you to race. So I don't know what the answer is on that, to be honest. Um, but in my in my way of racing, you know, the the outside the white line is there's a wall there, but you can't just run somebody completely off. You know, and then we saw the chain effect of what happened there, and then with you know with uh, Pietro, which you know. Pietro really had nowhere to go, but it was because of the 27 and the issue that we had. So I don't know. I just, you know, I said I wouldn't race him like that. And and that was kind of the end of it. So, Well, all things considered, that's pretty humble words from Scott. You know, there was a, a lot at stake there. Certainly his championship was at stake. And you can't ever repair those things. It doesn't matter how many drive-through penalties you give or whatever. If you're out on lap one of a race, that's it. You're done and dusted. And that was certainly the case for him at Portland. But we move on now. Two races at Milwaukee. The return to Milwaukee. Very long time since the series have been there. If uh, those of you who follow IndyCar racing remember the last time the, the cars were there, we didn't have the aero screen. We had these big mudguardy type things on the cars. They were big chunky cars back then. Uh, so a, a lot's happened. Milwaukee, pretty much a flat track uh, a very different type of oval to nearly anywhere else there is in the country. Had the chance to talk to Joseph Newgarden again before the event kicked off on just what he felt the changes were between the last time the series was at Milwaukee and this time. Oh, well, it's different, you know, compared to 2015 when we left, we had the, you know, huge aero kit. It was a big downforce. You were pretty much just flat. So it's very different from 2015. Yeah, yeah, we're we're way exactly, you know, we're we're way heavier. So from that standpoint, it's it's completely different. Um, but I think it's still Milwaukee. You know, like sort of the general traits of this track are very much there underneath the surface. It's just a different car. You know, it's a lot less downforce. It's heavier. You know, requires a different setup and 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 you know different finesse. Like you got to look after things differently than you did, you know, ten years ago. But um, it's same Milwaukee. You know, there's a preferred line. There's a there's kind of an alternate line that's uh not great but usable so it's yeah it's it's a very interesting track and i think if you know we get some drop off then there's there's going to be you know good racing um which i think everybody wants to see well whether you're a fan of joseph or not one thing you have to take into account is he certainly knows his way around a short track oval and he's proved that time and time again uh, this year and years gone past. And of course, the Super Speedway taking out his second Indy 500 back in what seems like a lifetime ago now in May. And that was a phenomenal end to that race, that's for sure. But looking at it all, yeah, there's some changes at, at Milwaukee, but it's going to be a, a great race. You've got to remember that this is a flat track oval, very different to anywhere else we get to. And of course, the next part of the thing was qualifying. Now, qualifying was done over a two-lap distance with lap one time counting for race one and lap two time 
counting for race two. There was a few engine penalties and bits and pieces in there. Driver who featured quite strong in that was Kiwi Marcus Armstrong, and it was a shame we didn't get the chance to catch up with him. But what we did do is we got Scott McLaughlin and Joseph Newgarden, who had uh, earned their respective positions for both those races, and got to them at the post-qualifying press conference. And David Turner, Racing World, go ahead and uh, unmute yourself. I'm sure you got a question for Scotty Mac. Yeah, I have, Dave. Thanks very much. Scott, we're talking here about the evolution and the changes in the track, um, you know, qualifying at the time you did, the time the races. By the time we get to race two tomorrow, is that track going to be even different again with the amount of rubber that it would have got from both Indy Next and you guys? I mean, I can't speak on, on experience, but certainly this is the first double header that we've had here, um, even from back in the day. So I imagine it would be a lot more gripped up and the, and the line bigger, but... Um... Yeah, we'll have to find out, Dave. We'll see. And then just, just one other quick thing, just looking at, at how quick the lap time is here. This is kind of aimed at both of you, really. Um, you're going to get into the lap traffic fairly quickly, and, and there was some significantly slower cars yesterday, which I think you mentioned in the press conference yesterday, Joseph. You know, like, does it get to the point where IndyCar wave those slower cars off, or how do you handle it when you get to the slower cars? Yeah, I mean, there's a rule in place, right? We have a 105% rule. Um, it's one of five, right? Yep, yeah. So, um, you know, if they're, if they're excessively slow, they will get black flagged. So you, you can only be so slow relative to the entire field. Um, so, you know, not worried about that, but, um, you know, raceability is what's important. If you've got a place to go and, and the tire provides you an opportunity to run around, then, you know, having cars that are way off the pace, it's not, it's actually easier to come up on those cars, you know, cars that are similar on pace are, is where it's going to get tougher. But I think lap traffic, it's, it's always been, you know, a key ingredient here to Milwaukee and it'll be no different this, this weekend. You got to, I think it's just how it's going to be. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. I uh, look forward to seeing the race in a couple of hours. Well done to both of you. And uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks at Nashville as well. Well, as he said, things will be what they will be. And for Newgarden, of course, it was a DNF in race one. Big work for the Penske team overnight. Plus the fact that they relivied both the cars overnight, uh, changing the sponsorship configuration. So a total new vinyl wrap, which took, I believe, somewhere around nine hours to redo both McLaughlin's car and Newgarden's car into a... A race day colour scheme for race one and then a race day colour scheme for race two. So big work from the Penske boys. Uh, and then, of course, the race itself. It was a pretty good race, really. Connor Daly getting up onto the podium for Junkos Hollinger Racing. Big milestone moment for them. Um, certainly would feel that maybe Roman Grosjean fancied himself in doing that. But Daly came to the party on that one. And yeah, a very big moment for them as they chase the all-important leader circle money as well as the season comes closer to an end. However, the big thing over the weekend was, of course, Pato Award, who took out that win in race one, and we'll hear from him in just a second. But one of the things that tended to probably irritate uh, the skin of uh, the Mark Miles from IndyCar itself was Pato's comments about NASCAR getting a race in Mexico and how IndyCar had dropped the ball and maybe IndyCar should have been there first. Now, obviously... You know, anyone wants a race in their own country and the Mexican, as in Pato, was very keen for that to happen and it kind of uh, swayed some of the move for the weekend and there was a bit of showboating as well, which you'll see in this piece from the press conference and of course Will stirs it up a little bit as well. Um, was it necessary? No, I think it was driver probably vetting his, his mind, but these are things that maybe IndyCar have to take into consideration. I still firmly believe if you can deliver races of this calibre in the US, that's the grassroots of IndyCar. Do that properly first without going offshore, and then you've got a series that's sellable offshore and uh, and worthy of a fan base. So uh, anyway, time will tell. post race press conference anyway. Uh, after the race, we got to hear from Pato. A wonderful, wonderful race for us. Uh, we really, you know, the, the car really came to life in the second stint, then it was a little gnarly after that. But uh, a lot of changing conditions. Uh, the track was getting quite a bit cooler and uh, tomorrow is obviously going to be quite a bit hotter than what it was today or at least how it ended. So, uh, you know, balances are going to change. Quick cars are going to, are going to, you know, are going to evolve and uh, we'll see where, where, sir, where we're at. But uh, yeah, super, super stoked and a great bounce back after a really tough weekend for, for me and the whole team. Uh, so really happy that I was able to give them this and Chevy top three. That's, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. America. We we should be in Mexico City, not NASCAR. Oh. No. Oh. <laughs> Wait, what? I say we should be in Mexico City, yeah. 
<laughs> Will clearly in a happy mood there, of course, because this championship is still firmly alive between him and Alex Palau. A lot of clowning around in that press conference, which uh, was kind of hard to read into. But the bottom take is, of course, Pato was expressing, I think, a, a bit of mind psych opinion on his uh, Mexico vibe, shall we say. Uh, worthy win for sure, absolutely. He knows how to drive around these ovals, very brave driver. Amazing performance from Daly. That was one that wasn't expected considering he started 25th and ended up on the podium, so that was pretty good. Uh, big factor in that race was the fact that it was a twilight type race. A lot of drivers talking about how bad it was to drive into the sun as the sun went down. Uh, something that maybe the facility would need to look at would be lights in the future if it was to do that again or of course as they were to have in race two an earlier start time uh, which leads us to race two so it was a complete contrast of what race one had been which had gone green for a lot of the, the period of the race race two however on the other hand had a fistful of yellows all sorts of things going on a crazy crazy start which took out multiple cars including for the second day in a row Joseph Newgarden and unfortunately in the end Marcus Armstrong Palau having problems at the start with engine issues or electrical issues that swung the whole championship around and at one stage during that race Will Power was actually leading the championship but the Ganassi team dug very very deep got the car back out there as you do in these championship uh, chases we've seen it happen with Penske before uh, many years ago at Fontana where Will they dragged the car behind got it back out there to get the laps on the board Exactly the same thing here with Palau and Ganassi. Ultimately what it's done is it's left about a 33 point buffer now between Palau and Power for the championship. Uh, McLaughlin, our eventual race two winner, which you'll hear from in just a mo, he is also a championship contender but effectively eliminates or gets eliminated as soon as the cars take the green at Nashville because he doesn't have enough points in, in tow. Then the battle for further back in the field, well, that's going to be really, really interesting. Where will Dixon end up in the title chase? He may actually only end up fifth, which uh, is not Dixon-like, but we'll talk again more about that in a minute. But what it did do is it put a Penske car back on the podium, and it was uh, Kiwi Scott McLaughlin that did it, but alongside him was the hard-charging Scott Dixon, so it was a Kiwi 1-2 it's very busy for the drivers to get out of Milwaukee to get home. They were very keen to get out of there, but I had a very brief chance to catch up with Scott McLaughlin. I'm not going to have time to get to everybody on Zoom, but I do want to hit David Turner, the hometown uh, folks down under. Oh, guys, this is Kiwis, all right? This is Kiwis looking after Kiwis. Keep, keep it. Keep it short, though, David. We don't yeah, need I'll a soliloquy keep... today. I've got to make a flight, bro, so let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep it short. I'll keep it short. First of all, another Kiwi one too, so we're, we're lining up for that Kiwi clean sweep of the podium, so that's one thing oh, that's yeah. coming, keeping it short. Um, just, just quickly, Scott, I know you've kind of touched on it, but the drivability of the track over the two days, the differences in the rubber, the temperature, everything, did that factor into today's race, or was it just another game on? Um, it was interesting. Like I thought the bottom lane today was a little bit harder than it was yesterday. I think the heat and, and it being a, uh, a darker sort of, tinge of asphalt um it was probably a little bit hotter today just to make those moves but yeah i mean like the track was really fun to drive and 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 slick in places but um once you sort of got your head around it, it was really really cool and um yeah it was a uh, super fun man super fun and then just just quickly because i know you've got to go but the 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 flat track that you've had this weekend and then back up onto a, a more elevated banked track and you know just over two weeks time um, differences for you as a driver do you you know what what's the first thing that goes through your mind well i haven't stepped foot in that joint yet so i'm i'm uh that's it's a whole new place for me i've seen some footage and whatnot and obviously watched the nascar racing there and, and some old indycar footage but um yeah it's going to be interesting how that races as well i'm hoping that you know we come with a similar tie to what we've done this weekend and, and we can have some really good racing like we have but i'm sort of expecting a little bit of action man i, I just people are crazy right now like, like there's a lot of people out there that don't give an f so um i'm excited to see uh see how we go well a win on an oval certainly makes you an indy car driver now there's no doubt about that but you've been one of those for a while uh really looking forward to catching up with you in nashville so we'll see you in about a week and a half's time thanks Dave. appreciate it man I need to bring some whitakers david a plug, I guess you could say, from Scott McLaughlin there to remind him that I need to take him up some Whitaker's chocolate when we uh, go to Nashville in just over a few days' time from now. 
Uh, great advertisement there, Whitakers, if you're ever listening. I can probably put the deal together for you if you really want to know. But anyway, it's great, uh, always great that a Kiwi makes time for a Kiwi as well. And Scott did that, uh, the very rush to get out of the Milwaukee circuit, get to airports and get home on commercial flights out of there as well. So really appreciate that. Great to see Kiwis on uh, step one and step two of the the uh, podium over the weekend and one day soon we're going to get all three of them up there and that'll be a major moment in motorsport for New Zealand that's for sure so it was a great the championship yes it's still alive it's really only the two contenders now that are in this thing Nashville has a lot of history and we're going to go into that in just a second but the other thing that really wanted to say was you know McLaughlin is not the only Kiwi that was on the top step of the podium over the weekend and big shout out to uh, Malcolm Finch who works at the Penske team you'll see him in this photo here uh, and he plays a big part in terms of performance management for Team Penske so we really had two Kiwis on the top step of, of the podium and great job Finchie you've been around these teams you were with Simon Pagenaud for a long time and been with Scott for the last few years of course featured in the documentary Kiwis Born to Fly last year so great to have Two Kiwis on the top step and one on the second step and we're working very hard on that third step. Speaking of the third step, let's just have a look at some Dixon stats for just a minute. Yes, Kiwi Scott Dixon, his 142nd career podium, all-time record, Scott Dixon. You know, we keep saying this name, we keep saying number of championships. I firmly believe there is a seventh championship in him. Unfortunately, it won't be this year, but 142 podium performances. That is just an outstanding stat. There is absolutely no doubt about it. And over 400 IndyCar starts. Just think about that for a second and then quantify that in your own mind. The fact that there's 17 races a year, 400 starts in this game. Uh, you know, that, that's a, a lot of experience, a lot of scenarios, a lot of waking up and going to work every day going, here we go again. But the drive and determination from this Kiwi individual is something that's very, very rare. And it's something that you don't see across the entire IndyCar paddock. So with 400 starts, that is a phenomenal performance. Now, just while we're on that, looking at Nashville, who won the last time they were at Nashville? Scott Dixon. Sure, it was a long time ago, but he won. He also held the fastest lap there, and he's won there three times before. So next week at Nashville, what are we going to see? Are we going to see another Dixon performance? Will Power certainly thinks so, but we're going to have a bit of strategy come into play, that's for sure, about where these other guys put their team guys. Will needs quite a bit to happen, but Alex is showing that anything is possible and he takes one slip up. Now that same can apply to Will Power, but we have yet again, other than last year, a chase for the championship title at the very, very last round. And that, in my eyes, sums up IndyCar as it's meant to be. Maybe we'll see that in Formula One this year because Lando Norris is certainly closing in now on Max Verstappen and Max Verstappen going, ah, oh, I don't think we can realistically win either the Constructors title or the, manif or the Drivers title in 2024. But again, that's gamesmanship. That's got a lot of races to go. IndyCar's got one race to go. Callum Hedge, he's looking to round out his season in Indy next. He's in the top sort of four or five that championship was taken out over the weekend by Louis Foster who we saw down here over the summer months in the Toyota series so uh, Louis Foster is the Indy Next champion for 2024 the rookie of the year championship was decided by Linus Lindquist and of course Blair Julian from uh, the New Plymouth district and his brother Anton who was in IndyCar for a long time uh, Blair the team manager at Ganassi's and also looks after Lindquist's strategy so great to have uh, Ganassi actually take out rookie of the year for two years in a row because of Marcus Armstrong winning it last year so lots of exciting things lots of exciting racing ahead some very big events lined up in Nashville a downtown uh, pit stop competition which will be phenomenal along the honky tonk row um, of course Indy Next and Indy Car on the return to the banked oval, not a flat track but a banked oval at the Nashville Super Speedway. So many many drivers never even been in the place so it's going to be excellent weekend and Racing World will be there Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So we will deliver all we can from the Nashville Super Speedway for you in just a few days just a time. In the meantime, don't forget, share, like, and subscribe. We really need to get that algorithm working in our favor yet again. And uh, once again, thank you so much for all you do by listening and supporting this show. Until Nashville, see ya.